Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Knappick. Every week we talk with interesting people in a variety of professions and along the way get ideas to enhance success in all categories of your life. Successful Living with Bill Knappick starts right now. Welcome to the Successful Living Show with Bill Knappick. I'm not Bill Knappick. I'm Donnie. I'm a guest host today with my lovely wife, Jacqueline. Thanks. And we're so excited for this opportunity to talk to you today. It has been such a crazy, crazy mm-hmm. week, not just in Houston, but all around the country. With and the, the world. And <laughs> a little bit. And the world, worse than other places in the world with this whole um, global pandemic that's going on. And we are not at all um, experts at all in any kind of medical or whatever we're just like you know absorbing it <laughs> and uh, and what are you watching to get your information uh, I'm trying to not watch it a little bit and just yeah. you know be a little bit informed and not obsessed I think that is the kicker here yeah mm-hmm. well and it's tough you know I mean I'm like looking at like Ben Shapiro and Hannity and I mean it's been been a lot of information and it's hard to absorb it all but a couple of things have happened where all of a sudden we have to send home uh, half of our staff to work at home and then all the parents are having to learn how to homeschool right well and thankfully with our staff there are half of them that can work from home they can work from their laptop it's just easier when we can sit down at a table together and have a meeting yeah Uh, but right now we're just having a lot of video chats yeah (laughs) and text messaging all day and yeah uh, so that's kind of what we're going to get in here into here is talking about how you can actually work from home when yeah. it's just hard to be in your everyday space right. and figuring out how to get something accomplished. Well, and uh, thank God for Microsoft Teams. Yeah, right? and FaceTime. <laughs> and FaceTime, because how would we even be able to function here without it? And yeah. um, so we have a couple of really, really awesome friends that um, that we would consider experts in both of those categories. Um, one <laughs> of them is uh, Stephanie Cook, who we'll talk to in a little bit, who is uh, has been homeschooling her kids. Well, not just homeschooling her kids kids but she's got five kids under 11 years old and she's got several jobs teaching musical theater and uh, music and all these different things so she she is well versed in all of these things yeah well so we'll bring her on in a minute yeah. um, but first we're going to talk to my friend JJ who I've known for eons who um, is an incredibly talented person musician and that's how I know him is from music um, but he actually works with Microsoft. Um, he is a business applications CE specialist at Microsoft. I had to, JJ, I had to look on LinkedIn to figure that out. <laughs> and I have no idea what that is, even means. So, hey, say hi to the folks at home and tell us what you actually do for a living. Hey, everybody. It's a very special specialist job. <laughs> very special. Very special. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, everybody. And thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah, so I, I work in sales for Microsoft. Uh, but very simply, the CE stands for customer engagement, anything mm-hmm. having to do with the front end of a product called Dynamics. Mm-hmm. And, and so anything having to do with improving our customers' uh, relationship or customer engagement with their customers. Yeah. So anything from their sales teams, marketing teams, field service teams, those types of things. So a lot of different technologies kind of interwoven in that part of the portfolio, but that's where I specialize. So, but you're no stranger to working at home, right? You, this is how long have you been actually working at home? Yeah. So officially in a sales role, you know, either for Microsoft or another tech company that I was at before this, uh, maybe three years or so officially, mm-hmm. you know, but as a musician, you know, before that, I uh, definitely made my schedule um, for many, many, many years, right? Working from home or working yeah. on the road, you know how that goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so about about three years. There was a, a, a short period in my life where I had a studio in the house and I, uh, and I did work from home. And, and so I, I made it a point to have a routine in the morning. I mean, I put my shoes on. You know, and then I went to work. And so um, tell me about your do you have a ritual? Do you have a routine or is it changed uh, different days? It's it's a little bit different now because of the whole, you know, COVID-19 situation. So mm-hmm. I think all of our routines are probably a little bit upside down. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But um, yeah, typically on a on a normal day, you know, we get up as a family. We'll do breakfast. We'll do coffee, um, and then I'll get out of the door pretty quick to go to the gym and try to get my workout in early. Just mm-hmm. knock that out first, um, and then depending, you know, on whether I need to go to uh, maybe like to a uh, customer site, if I'm going to go to a mm-hmm. uh, you know particular customer, or if I'm just straight working from home, then I'll just come straight back and shower. Um, or not, I'll just stay in my workout clothes. Because um, <laughs> I work out from home. That's right. <laughs> if I'm going to be offensive to anybody, it's just me. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, get a good cup of coffee and come upstairs and get to it. Are there any challenges that you face being a, a working at home compared to if you were in an office and not at home? When you work from home, there the upside. Um, you know, is that you're at your own house, so it's familiar. The the challenges and um, you know, the kind of the struggle that comes along with it is the uh, first thing is really around uh, time management. Hmm. So when you go to an office and you get into a routine, I know that I leave today, I'm going to get to the office at this time, I knock out emails from this time to this time. Um, you know, you're kind of at work and so your mind is on work because yeah. you drove there, you've put a significant amount of time and resources to get to that place of business. Right. And when you work from home, it's like, where do, where's the dividing line between work and home mm-hmm. uh, for me and my family, right? Yeah. So um, boundaries in your time management is is the where it gets kind of challenging, especially since right now many people are working from home. Yeah. We're all doing a lot of remote remote phone calls, right, and a lot of video conferencing like we're doing now. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of my job. If I'm not presenting or, or talking to a client in person, we're doing exactly what we're doing right now. We're talking on Teams, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty normal. Um, but under, you know, a normal uh, week, my kids are at school or they're at, you know, they're out doing play dates. They're real young. Um, uh, but pretty much every one of my uh, conference calls yesterday my kids were on those calls. So they were (laughs) running upstairs Uh, and the youngest one who's almost three, you know, he pops in and, uh, you know, I'm on a call with somebody. He says, daddy, you at work? Like, (laughs) yeah, I was. Yeah, buddy, I'm working. (laughs) I was right now. Uh, And let me introduce you to the team that I'm talking to here, (laughs) you know? So, you know, uh, they all get a kick out of it. You see your kid see someone's kid running up in their PJs going, you know, yeah. daddy, help me with the dress. Yeah. Um, I need you to get my daddy daughter date dress down so I can show Nana how pretty it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's comical. Yeah. Is there an upside? Is there something wonderful that, that, that we could focus on now about having to work at home? What's the benefit to that? I think definitely on the flip side, if you have the ability to stay focused and have boundaries around your time, I feel like I get so much more done when I'm at home. Yeah. Because if I'm at an office, I'm tempted to socialize because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in sales. I'm somewhat extroverted. And so mm-hmm. when I'm at home, I find myself being a lot more task oriented around defining every day what's my goals for, what are my goals for today? What matters? Where do I have to move the ball, mm-hmm. you know, personally, professionally, that type of thing. Yeah. So I think it's a great way to be more focused if you work from home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the second piece is, is, you know, there's a lot of flexibility that comes with working from home, mm-hmm. you know, and for some people, maybe that's not so good. They don't mm-hmm. necessarily know how to set the boundaries for themselves. Right. I would tend to lean towards having a hard time shutting work off because mm-hmm. I, I enjoy what I do. Yeah. And so it's kind of hard to, to do that at times. I, um, but I think the plus side is you have a lot of flexibility. So if let's say there's something that my family needs downstairs or you know, my wife needs help getting the kids in the car, then mm-hmm. I can just put things on pause for a second and go, yeah, sure, I can help. So let's say you're talking to a friend who has never worked from home and all of a sudden they're, they're just stuck here and the kids are driving them nuts and <laughs> internet's not working and they don't have their printer or whatever it is that they, you know, are used to. They don't have their routine. Um, yeah. Is there a thing or a couple of things that are like, hey, uh, do this, do this. It'll change your life. Mm. The first thing I could I would recommend for anybody working from home is you have to have a daily task list. Mm, wow. uh, you have to have a, a when you wake up before you do anything before yeah. you do anything for your job, you have to say where was I yesterday and where do I want to be at the end of today and mm. how do I 
track and measure my own personal goal, success. Goal setting. That's right. You yeah. have to set goals every day. Yeah. And so um, I'm a huge fan of, uh, there's a book called High Performance Habits from Brennan Burchard, okay. and he has a great uh, practice, actually a meditation practice called um, uh, Release Tension, mm -hmm. Set Intention. Yeah. So most most days before I start, I actually will sit on the ground in my office for about 10 minutes and meditate mm -hmm. and try to release any type of tension that I have and then try to set my mind and my attention on what, I, what do I want to get out of my day yeah. today? What yeah. do I want to get around the next thing that I do and try to map? He calls it mastering transitions, right? You go from mm -hmm. email to meeting to the, like, you know, making sure that each one of those little spots in between those chunks of things you do during the day, mm -hmm. you stop, you kind of leave the last thing behind and mm -hmm. then set your goals for the next thing that you're going to do. Wow. So that's, I think that's a super important thing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to work from home is you've got to set goals. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, there thank we you. Thank you so much for being here. And I just have to point out that you always out geek me on books, man. Always. <laughs> <laughs> you're always like, did you read this? And I'm like, no, I haven't even yeah. heard of it. <laughs> always something new to learn, right? Well, I'm going to read that one next. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and i will see you um on the flip side thanks, thanks yeah. right. hey thanks for having yeah. me talk see to you guys soon Bye. oh man that was good um so i you know i just thinking about um uh, about me and those years of working at home and now here we are back at it again and then um i remember you saying this like a month ago you said um i wish i just had a day at home yeah I think I would be way more productive if I worked from home once a week. Yeah. And I'm thinking about doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, what I've accomplished in the last, what, four days that mm -hmm. we've been home mm -hmm. is so significant yeah. that it's like, like he was saying, when we're at the office, it's like you want to socialize. You're around people. Right. You can't help but talk. And it's like, and not that it's a bad thing to talk and socialize, but... Mm -hmm. If you're in the middle of working on something and you stop for even five minutes to have a conversation, it's so hard to get back into the focus to start the thing that you started. Right. So I, you know, in my brain, it takes me 15 minutes to really get into a particular task mm -hmm. and then I'm in it. Mm -hmm. And then I got to focus on just that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what could take me maybe 30 minutes or an hour if I'm at the office, it might take me all day long just yeah. because of the constant interruptions with phone calls and deliveries and people walking in the office and right. random text messages. Yeah. So at home, I, 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 like this week, I've been trying to put my phone on silent mm -hmm. and put it to the side mm -hmm. and turn off my texting notifications. And turn off like, the news. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Because yeah. you can just become a obsessed with that yeah. instead of focusing on your task yeah that was just so great to talk to JJ and <laughs> and learn all that from him and now we've got um, an awesome couple Stephanie and Craig Cook who are uh, they are no amateurs <laughs> to homeschooling and it's such a crazy time right now you got all these parents who are like uh, get me out of here <laughs> and they don't know where to start hi Stephanie and Craig thanks for coming on the show hello, hello. thank you for having us <laughs> yeah okay so you are obviously pros at homeschooling and um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family how many kids and ages that kind of stuff Sure. So I'm Craig. This is my wife, Stephanie. We have five kids. Um, Caleb is 11. He's in fifth grade. And Luke is eight. He's in third grade. Beth is seven and she is in first grade. And Bonnie is five and she's in pre-K. And then Mabel is three and she is in a little cubbies class, not really started actual school yet, but oh. as home coolers know, you start from birth. Well, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you did it! You yes, made it. Made it. That's, that's a lot of kids. Wow. <laughs> so how like how do you teach so many different ages and different curriculums? Well, I think the biggest thing to remember is that the ability levels are all different. Yeah. So your oldest students can read and they can write and they can do so much on their own. Yeah. Um, and they're used to doing that in a classroom with a teacher that's teaching, you know, 15 to 30 students. So it's not 
unheard of for them to work independently. And then your youngest students are going to need more side by side. They can't read the instructions. Sure. They can't work. So you just balance okay, I know this kid can do this by themselves, but this kid needs me to sit with them. So it's all about figuring out the schedule of who needs me and who can work alone. And um, and what space is that best for? Is this person going to talk through their whole assignment, even though they can do it on their own? So they need to be, <laughs> we they need to be away. Uh -huh. They need to be away from the one yes. that needs it quiet. Yes. So um, you really just have to gauge your kids. And it's, you know, these, these families that are being thrown into homeschool, you don't have the luxury of a soft <laughs> opening. <laughs> right. This is here's the storm, and you're thrown in, and you got to figure it out all in I one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so I think just figuring out what they can do by themselves, which they probably can do more <laughs> than you think, and realizing that you might have to go back and correct. Were you homeschooled as a kid? Is that something that you're used to? Or this is just kind of, you know, how did you get into that? So neither of us were homeschooled as, as kids. We grew up in the same town and both went to public school, basically from kindergarten through high school. Wow. Um, so I'll, I'll let her say how we got <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm... We, we were we were both went to public school and so when we were investigating options um, we just we were, we weren't like in the public school options where we were living and so we were going we're gonna go the private school route and then we heard about this model um, this university model where our kids would go to school two days a week and then be homeschooled the rest of the time and we just thought well that sounds cool let's try that and we really felt the lord saying go for it jump in there try it see how it works and here we are seven years later wow well, still cool. doing it. Love it what's your morning routine like i mean is it the same all the time do you have a schedule straight from the beginning or is it kind of just throughout the day so on our days that we're we're doing work at home uh we it's pretty much the same on those days and that is that we start with chores in the morning uh, you know unload the dishwasher make sure things are picked up and then breakfast and then start with bible so our first class if you will of the day or our first subject of the day is bible we usually tend to do that all together yeah. um, and we have a lesson together and then once we complete that we kind of break out into our own sessions if you will um of whatever whoever's doing which subject first and whoever's teaching who first is it hard to keep them each focused like what's the what are the challenges with that Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. All of them. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, you know, our kids are used to this model, but they've been doing it for a long time. And so, hi. So you kind of have to, <laughs> they're always here. Well, for sure. Um, yeah. Mommy, mommy, mommy. So you have to figure mommy, out. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Mommy, mommy, mommy. You have to Mabel? figure out. This is Mabel. Hi, Mabel. You have to figure out what's going to motivate them. So our kids are highly motivated by snacks. And, Mommy, I'm telling you something. And stickers <laughs> and outside time. Yeah. And um, so we, you know, work, completed work earns a reward. So yeah. if we say, okay, you focus, we're going to do this subject, and then you get to go play outside, or you get to have a snack, or you get to do a sticker on your chart or yeah. whatever the motivation is for that age level. I totally bribed our kids today. I said, if you play outside for an hour, you can have a popsicle. <laughs> yes. Like yes. It was even like the healthy popsicle and they were yeah, all yeah. for it. It's not okay. bribery. It's motivation, yeah. right? Like we all, we, Definitely. you go to work, so you get a paycheck. Yeah. So you're motivated, yeah. right? We're motivated. Exactly. Kids are motivated too. You just have to find that motivation. And eventually, you know, our, especially our older, 
oldest students, they want to get their work done because they know that if they get their work done, they get to enjoy many things. So they're more motivated. The little ones are kind of like, meh. I don't want to. So that you have to use outside. (laughs) So the older boys have figured out the faster they work, the more free time they have. Or the, you know, that's awesome. That's a good trait to have. I mean, people need to know that. The more work you get done, the more money you make. Yes. That's 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 all of us. That's right. Well, good. So, um, how about the upsides of homeschooling? Like, what has been what's been really great for you, for your family, for your schedule? You know, what are what are the Sides. I think the biggest and probably most obvious one for us is time with our kids. Yeah. Um, you know, that face to face time and uh, allowing us to, at a very early age, establish ourselves as the source of knowledge. Yeah. Um, and so when they have questions about anything, even if it's not school, um, then they know that they can come to us and they can trust what? us to what? either know the answer or as happens many times when you're teaching things like algebra or, you know, some science subject, you know how to go find the answer. Yeah. Um, so they have, you have the ability to establish, establish yourself as that, as that person for them. Oh, that's really great. I think that's the one big thing for us this week, being home for, oh, it's been a week now, where we're just at home. I mean, we're doing family bike rides and things that we typically, we're just rushing home from school. They have all these after school activities. We're never home till after six o'clock and the little one especially needs to be in bed by 730. And so it's like we're, we've had more family meals in the last week than we've yes. had it. I mean, since I don't know when. Um, so it's been it's been really great for us. Well, thank you so much for your input on all of this. We know that y'all are the the pros here with five kids. And, um, no, you definitely are. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Sure. Absolutely happy to do Give it. Give yourself lots of grace. You're it's it's going to be good. You're yes. you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. Yes. You're going to spend time with your kids. That's what's important. Oh. Awesome. Well, thank you so yeah. much. We appreciate that. Yeah. Sure. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Um, give yourself lots of grace. Yeah. Um, it's going to be good. You're going to get to spend more time with your kids. I mean, that's just. And being the source of knowledge. Yeah. That's just such incredible. Aren't you the one that advice. wants to be like, you want your kids to know what you know. That's and right. more than what you know. But you want that information to come from you, your beliefs, right. your background. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, that's you're, amazing. You're, yeah. You're not cha- being challenged by. These by school teachers who maybe mean well, but um, don't believe what you believe and yeah. think what you think. And what a great opportunity. And I love how he says we start the day with Bible. Yeah. Like, Maybe your kid's not even getting that in school, but this is an opportunity for you to create whatever curriculum curriculum you want. Yeah. I mean, teach them how to work on a car. Who knows? Well, and I've seen that <laughs> going around a lot. People are like, yeah. you know what? This is a good time to take the opportunity to teach your kid to do the laundry. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. change a tire. Yeah. Whatever it is, um, sew a button. Right. You know, these are the things that we usually don't have time to do. And like most people, you get going off to college and you're like, man, I wish somebody taught me these things. Maybe there's an efficiency also for the student, like there is for the adult, mm-hmm. as, as you're finding, um, uh, you especially working in the, the finances and QuickBooks and the challenge of that, to be able yeah. to have that focused time with no distraction, you can get more done in a shorter amount of time. Maybe that's true for the kid too, that they're yeah. able to sit down with their calculus or whatever and be completely undistracted and get it over with and get their reward. Right. Like Stephanie told us about, I mean, what... Well, the reward is still <laughs> extra time yeah. <laughs> to do what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and from what I've heard, most homeschoolers, you know, it's only two to four hours a day. Yeah. And it's because they're at home, they're by themselves and they're focused and yeah. they're getting it done. And they're so efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Well, this has been such good information for me. I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know. Just so good. Um, but um, uh, what a privilege to get to talk to them and learn from them. And uh, and big thanks to Bill, Bill Knappick for letting us uh, be involved in this. This has been um, the Successful Living Show with Bill Knappick. We hope that you'll tune in next week to hear Bill. 